play. Welcome. Ah, another stoic, perhaps. We've all been where you are now. I used to lay awake at night, contemplating the big questions. I still don't have any of the answers, I'm afraid. All right, well, it was lovely to meet you. I look forward to getting to know you better over the coming months. And if you ever... I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. Orpheus, what are you doing? Get back from there. That's the idea. What? What? I'm... I'm sorry. Please, help. You... Well, you don't... If I... No, I am out. Wherever you are, Centilla, my love. I'm sorry. Olpius, no! I... I'll have to let... And I... And here you are. Allow me to introduce myself. As you have already gathered, I've been known by many names. Nergal to the Sumerians, Osiris to the Egyptians, Hades to the Greeks, and Pluto to the Romans. But the one constant through it all has been my title, God of the Underworld. And I've been watching you with curiosity, mortal, ever since your life. You're unlike the Aren't you? And what is more, you carry a weapon that was never intended for mortals to wield, and you do it so reasonably. But there will be time for your reckoning later. First, as a reward for undoing the desecration of my obelisk, I will allow you to satisfy your curiosity. Ask what you will. My story is many thousands of years long. My kin and I all adopted this form long ago, so that we might better understand and communicate with your kind. In time, we grew fond of the sensory delights it affords, desire, joy, ecstasy, even rage and sorrow, while an acquired taste can be addictive. No. Long ago, I swore to myself that I would remain in this form for as long as we remained among your kind. I must honor that. This is my beloved. Like me, she has been known by many names. Eresh Kigel to the Sumerians, Isis to the Egyptians, Persephone to the Greeks, and Proserpina to the Romans. Or perhaps you might know her as the goddess of springtime, the cycle of life and me. Your gaze lingers too long. That is my servant. You would have met by the river, though she wears many faces and goes by many names. Kumu Tabal to the Sumerians. Her role is to ferry souls between the mortal world and this one, and to make their transition as seamless as possible. 
For that, she earned herself the infamous, if erroneous, moniker, the Ferryman. You will talk more later. For now, ask your questions. It is a matter of perspective. God is a label I was given by you mortals, not one I gave myself. Your ancestors revered me because to them, my knowledge and technology made me incomprehensibly powerful, just as you might seem so to an insect. But despite all that, there are rules even I must obey. As you wish. It has come to be known simply as the Underworld, and it exists because of a wager I made long ago. That is a long story, one that began over 3,000 years ago and continues to this day. You see, long ago my kin and I set out from our home on Elysium to search for other forms of life among the stars. We discovered your planet and witnessed your kind evolving from primates into something lawless and barbaric. You all but destroyed yourselves. Your two short lives being extinguished by violence and ignorance and disease. Yet Proserpina saw raw potential in you, and persuaded the rest of us it would be squandered without our intervention and stewardship. So we revealed ourselves to your people in a place called Sumer. We offered guidance in agriculture, toolcraft, and law, and you called us gods. For a time, you flourished. But soon you were too many for us to oversee. And as you spread from that cradle of civilization, we saw something disturbing. We had sown the seeds of dependency and confusion. And soon you returned to your old ways of violence and ignorance. This time in our name. My kin had seen enough and gave up on your kind. We began preparations to return to Elysium, our home world. A utopia unspoiled by conflict and unimaginable in its beauty. But my Proserpina could not bear to abandon your kind without guidance, and knowing it would force the rest of us to leave her behind, she made an extraordinary sacrifice. She gave up her immortality to descend permanently to the ranks of humankind. And so she began her inescapable trajectory toward death. Horrified, I acted swiftly. I placed her in suspended animation in a deep, frozen sleep to prevent age and sickness from claiming her. And then I pleaded with Proserpina's father, who the Romans called Jupiter, to bring her with us to Elysium. It was and is my hope that once there, we might one day learn to undo what she has done to herself. But he refused. I did everything I could to persuade him, but he would not relent. He would rigidly uphold his final pronouncement. Humans were unworthy of ascension to Elysium, and no exceptions would be made. But seeing that I was aggrieved, he proposed a wager, the terms of which were as follows. If even one human city could prove itself capable of living without sin for a single year, then Proserpina and all of humanity would be permitted to join us in Elysium. My part would be to remain behind, the last of my kind, to watch over you without interfering, and to sit in silent judgment. And so my reward has been to languish here, enduring a 3,000 year winter, waiting for the day your kind proves itself worthy of her faith in you so that I might take her with me to Elysium and unthaw my goddess of springtime. And here I am, after all this time, still waiting. There were also gods who, like me, have been known by many names, but perhaps you knew them by their own names. Our leader, Jupiter, as well as Neptune, Saturn, Juno, Minerva, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Diana, Vulcan, Vesta, Ceres, and of course, my beloved Persephone. As the first wave of your kind arrived from Sumer, I had them build a city in their own fashion, 
I had them build the entrance as a vertical shaft leading to baths, to cleanse them of the sins of their former lives, and to prevent escape. I watched wave after wave of Sumerians arrive, and as their civilization declined over the centuries, they were replaced by Egyptians. Of course, believing themselves to be the superior civilization, the Egyptians promptly built over what had been built before. They made all the same mistakes. After another thousand years, the Greeks began to arrive, and then the Romans, and they all did the same thing. They built upon the underworlds of their predecessors, renamed their gods, and ensured their foundations were forgotten. To ensure the wage was fair, it was important that my subjects were chosen at random. To this end, I had my servant distribute a thousand tokens fashioned from silver, a rare element at the time, across all of Zuma. Whoever died while in possession of one of them would be located by my servant and ferried to this place, with no memory of how they arrived. As the tokens were discovered, they were traded, smelted, and fashioned into trinkets, and eventually coins, spreading to Egypt like seeds on the wind. Later, when they spread to Greece, they would come to be known as Charon's Oval, or as coins for the ferryman. Some placed coins in the mouths of their dead, hoping they would awaken here, though they had no way of knowing which coins were fashioned from the original tokens. In fact, almost all of the tokens are accounted for, only two remain. And so after this wave destroys itself, as it is destined to do, your kind will have squandered the last of its potential to ascend beyond this rock, and Persephone's along with it. It is a regrettable story. One of the first men who came to this place was a king of Sumer, a troublemaker. To be rid of him, I returned him to his people, on the condition that my servant erased his memories of this place. But the erasure did not take completely, and he told stories of this place as if describing memories of a dream. His tales were committed to writing, which came to be known as the Epic of Gilgamesh, Later, the Egyptians would adapt Sumer's stories of the underworld, making them wildly intricate and labyrinthine. Their Book of the Dead and Book of Gates bore less and less resemblance to this place in their priests' pursuit of profit. Then, when the Greeks began to arrive, they proved far more cunning, and in a series of incidents that will not be repeated, five of them escaped. A warrior named Heracles, two kings named Sisyphus and Theseus, a poet named Orpheus, and a Trojan named Aeneas. They each told embellished tales of this place, how to get here, and how to escape. And so from Sumer to Egypt, Greece to Rome, your kind has always told each other stories about this place, though each story contained only a seed of truth. Of course. That is merely the name your people have given to it, but yes, it is my doom. That is a story dating back to the very first wave. After the Sumerians finished building their city, the self-declared ruler threw a banquet to celebrate. Now this man was unmarried, and many women were vying to become his wife. Of all the women, two were particularly ambitious their hair woven in elaborate fashion. The first woman, recognizing that she would require an advantage to win the ruler's affection, draped herself in jewelry, ornate necklaces, bracelets and rings fashioned from gold. Seeing this ostentatious display, the second woman grew envious, for she had no such jewelry at her disposal. She prayed aloud to any gods that would listen to cover her in gold. And when her prayer went unanswered, she took matters into her own hands. While the others indulged at the banquet, the second woman summoned the first for a discussion in a quiet place. She checked that nobody was watching, and pushed her rival from the top of the ziggurat where she broke her neck on the rocks below. But I was watching, and I decided to answer her prayer. 
I took the golden bow left behind by Diana, and I shot that woman in the heart, covering her from head to toe in a layer of molten gold. And I left her to stand there. But that was not enough, for the entire city was tainted by her sin. So I had no choice but to wipe the slate clean. And to this day, each of them, and all who came after, line the halls of this city, inanimate but conscious. Suspended in time with only their sight and hearing preserved, so they may bear witness to and lament the folly of your kind for eternity, the silent golden sentinels. I give your kind a second chance at life, as well as ample warning about my law. And when you disobey, and you always disobey, you force my hand. And so you ask if I am the one destroying your lives. And I say, no, you destroy yourselves. I am merely the means by which you do it. When my kin departed, they left behind many relics which I inherited. A consolation prize of sorts. The golden bow originally belonged as my collection of golden statues grew. I chose the most ferocious among them and equipped them each with a duplicate of her bow and tasked them with hunting down the forsaken at my behest. They became known simply as Furies. I've always considered that the cornerstone of morality is the ability to determine right from wrong on one's own. No attempt to lay out rules like your Code of Hammurabi or your Twelve Tables of the Roman Republic can ever cover all possible scenarios. This should come as no surprise to you, since the core principle has been expressed in many forms by many of your civilizations. The Egyptians made a rudimentary attempt with do to the doer to make him do. The Greeks refined it with avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. The Roman Stoics added, treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Even the so-called cultists hiding among you often say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It is the simplest of concepts, and each one of you is born with the faculties required to apply it to any situation. Yet none of the peoples who expressed this rule were able to uphold it. Curious, is it not? Enough. You clearly know nothing. I am able to commune with all of the statues in the city. If she was still conscious, I suppose she could, but she's not. Why do you ask? Then what an odd question. Do you plan to speak in sweeping generalizations, or are you going to give me an example? You speak of the moneylender. How is that inconsistent with the rule? And he would never have signed a contract pledging his labor for 30 years. All he did was enforce the terms of a contract signed voluntarily by others. Ignoring your irritating sense of moral superiority, this is interesting. I'm curious, how do people escape poverty where you are from? I see, and how long might it take such a person to repay their debt? I fail to see how your system of loans is significantly different to a debt bondsman signing over his labor for 30 years. Now tell me. The merchant. How is that in con I disagree. Having watched this merchant, that is precisely what he would expect from others. And applying this rule always requires speculation to some degree. It requires us to ask what another person would want if they found themselves in another situation. Not if we're wise enough to know the mind of man. Hmm. Supposing you're right, then my law has been broken. 
and I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? Then your desire to be right outweighs your desire to supply. You will make a fine statue. <laughs> Do you really think you can wound me, a god, with that primitive weapon? How dare you threaten her? This ends now. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve for... Oh. Yulia. Poor... What? Are you... You're serious, aren't you? All right, let me see. I'll go. Allow me to but the and what the dev fur That is me Do you The midwife and the palace, yes. How is that inconsistent with the rule? The rule is do unto others, meaning other people. Those statues are something else now. They are forsaken. Applying this rule always requires us to interpret the meaning of the words. 
Hmm. Supposing... Huh. Now tell me. Ah, the tavern keeper, yes. How is that inconsistent with the rule? I disagree, having watched that tavern keeper. That is precisely what you would expect from others. Applying this rule... Now tell me. I have seen... Taking one's own life is a self-directed act. Therefore, it... Now tell me. Abduction? You mean the magistrate imprisoning his daughter in the system? He did so because she sought to escape. A sin I take particularly seriously. Better that he stops her from escaping, albeit brutishly, than I have to wipe out this entire city to punish her. Wouldn't you agree? Hmm. Huh. Now tell me. Do you honestly think you could do better? I should strike you down for that. Huh. Now. There. I, I would recognize that anywhere. And yet my beloved still wears hers. What is this? How did you come by it? You vile, despicable creature. Why would you do such a thing? And worse still, boast about it. You... you have put me in an impossible position. If I refuse, you will murder her. And yet, if I agree, I will lose my wager and return to Elysium, humiliated and alone. I do not see that I have a choice in this. Your treachery and savagery have opened my eyes like nothing I have witnessed in three thousand years. And now you have shown me your species' true colors. And I see that Persephone was a fool to have ever believed in you at all. This has gone on too long. It is time for me to let go of this form of her, of all of you. But know this, if I abandon the way and leave for Elysium, neither she nor your kind may ever sin. Hmm. Very well. I will have Karen make arrangements to ferry the others. But as for you, be aware you will be separated from the rest. Once this exodus begins, the events that brought you to this moment will never have taken place, and you will have created a paradox. What will become of you is difficult to predict, but that is the risk you have taken interfering in the natural flow of time. Now, are you ready? You would best pray our paths never cross again, mortal. Right. Thought I was in here alone. I'm Al. Well, here I am. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, did that lady in the forest send you in here after me? I'm fairly certain you and I are the first. Fortunately for us, the last person in here was a Roman man named Galerius, who inscribed an account into a tablet. Apparently, there was a community of 20-something people trapped in here, and living in fear of a curse they called the Golden Rule. They believed that if even one person sinned, an unknown god would cast them all into gold, like the thousand people who'd lived here before them. Then, one day, just as Galerius had finished praying for a good harvest at the shrine of Proserpina, an oracle appeared and told him how to solve the ills of the city, like saving the life of a dying woman, foiling an assassination attempt, and so on. Meanwhile, the oracle walked up to the temple of the mysterious god, this one right here, 
and demanded an audience. And the doors just opened up to him. Nobody knows what went on in there, but Galerius wrote the Oracle must have been more persuasive than Odysseus, because the next thing he knew, the ground shook and the voice of that god rang out over the city. The many have suffered long enough. Unfortunately, Galerius' account just sort of stops after that, leaving a lot of questions unanswered. What became of him and the other people who lived here? What happened to all the golden statues? And did this mysterious oracle single-handedly undo the curse that had terrorized people for hundreds of years? Uh, what? Anyway, I think I found a way out through the aqueduct that brought water into the city. Follow me. I'm going to pause here for a moment. You go on. You're back. But you're alone. Oh, what a relief. Why don't you tell me what you discovered? Ah, I see. I thought you might. Well, now you know. I suppose you have questions. You- I do- that- that- most- ask- a wise decision. It means- I am now bereft of purpose. There is nobody else to ferry here. Nobody to keep you company. I see no point in keeping you here. But I have to ask one thing. That you keep this to yourself. Look! Here comes Al now! Al! It's so good to see you! Kinda lost track of time in there. You wouldn't believe what we found. And there was a tablet describing an oracle who confronted a god and undid an ancient curse. Sounds like quite a story. And I look forward to hearing all about it. But... You two look exhausted. Sounds good to me. And you? Hey, you made it. It's great to see you again. I read your book, and what the critics said about it. I guess they weren't ready for your theories about the Underworld. Anyway, after everything you've been through, I thought you might appreciate some good news. So after we got back to the real world, I started doing some research into the people mentioned in Galerius' tablet, and I found something strange. I'm sorry I've been so cryptic. I've been dying to tell you, I just really wanted you to see this for yourself. Why don't you head on down there? I'll catch up with you at the other end. Oh, hello. Oh, there he is! You're finally here! Remember me? It's a crazy story. After you disappeared, Charon appeared and told us she was returning us to the world. Even gave us some coins to help us start our lives over. Only... For some reason, she returned us to your world instead of ours. Anyway, I know we only ever had that one conversation, and I wasn't even sure if you'd remember me, but I wanted to say thanks for freeing us from the underworld and giving us a second chance at life. I know! I can't believe my luck either! But we're engaged and living together. We're planning to get married next spring. If you're going to be around, we'd love to see you there. Oh, I used Karen's gift to buy a farm in Umbria. Got a villa on it too, with enough room for Dooley, of course. 
It's hard work, but I sleep soundly every night. I'm finally my own man, and I... I wouldn't change it for the world. Of course, there's a whole museum full of people waiting for a chance to thank you, so you'd better keep moving. You're here. So, you're the hero who somehow vanquished the last of the Roman gods. As I'm a priestess, you realize you've put me out of work. I'm just teasing. Actually, and it still feels a little sacrilegious to say this, I'm finding life after religion quite enjoyable. Oh, it's sweet of you to ask. She recovered nicely. Galerius and I are engaged and expecting. It feels like the world has just opened up for us. We're just so thankful for what you did for us. See you at the wedding, I hope. Hello, I'm Dooley. Galerius said you're very nice and a big helper. Thank you for getting us out of the bad place. I didn't like it. It's you. I live at Galerius and e Equitia's house. They look after me now and help me remember when I forget things, like brushing my teeth. Treasure? Oh, I forgot about that. I like my box now. Galerius got me a box that tells stories. It's my favourite thing. Yeah, they're fun. Bye bye. You're. You're the Oracle, right? Oh, of course, sorry. And I never got a chance to thank you for telling Galerius how to save my life. And of course, getting me and all of us out of a terrible situation. Last I heard, Maliolus kept insisting he was the last rightful ruler of the Roman Empire and wound up being committed to a psychiatric hospital. As for Claudia, she was always so viciously unhappy. Someone says she'd blown all her money on wine, trying to drink herself back to the underworld. Hi there. After the horrific way they treated Ulpius and me, I can't help feeling a sense of... What's that German word? Schadenfreude? Thank you. You're very kind. Oh, I barely recognize myself. I'm living in a house share in London with my wonderful girlfriend. And I'm studying English at university. Eventually, I want to travel the world and write about it. Turns out, it's about 30 times bigger than the Roman Empire ever was. Did you know there are entire continents Rome never knew existed? And you can travel almost anywhere in an aircraft, which is rather like flying on a Pegasus, but much more comfortable. Oh, sorry, you already know all that, of course. I'm just so excited. I have noticed people from your time have no idea how fortunate they are. I hope to change that. <laughs> One day. Ugh, someone told me she was boasting about getting her claws into some rich prince, and how she was going to be living the high life from now on. Even in your time, life still isn't fair. Apparently, he'd proposed before they'd even met. And last I heard, she'd bought herself a first-class one-way ticket to join him in some exotic place called... What was it? Nigeria? Some people have all the luck. Really? Huh. I feel better already. Thank you. You too! If you're ever in London, let me know. We can go to bars and drink wine and listen to the stories of the nine million people who live there. I hope so. You are here. It's nice to finally meet you. Lucy is fine. I'm making an effort to blend in, as you can see. We are all trying to keep a low profile. If the world knew we died 2,000 years ago and were suddenly brought back to life 12 months ago, they'd never leave us alone. Speaking of which, I wanted to say thank you in person. 
I'd say the gods smile on you, but I hear you drove the last of them off. So, I'm studying to get into medical school. As much as I resented the responsibility of keeping everyone in the city alive, when it ended, I realized I missed it. You too. Don't be a stranger. Hey. Hi there, I'm Horatius. I understand we have you to thank for giving us a second chance at life. And reuniting Santilla with us as well. So, thank you. I'm living up north and studying in the military academy in Modena. I'm going to be an officer one day. The world's changed a lot. But some things stay the same. Would you believe we're still studying military tactics from my time? Alexander the Great, Caesar, Hannibal Barker. Still, I have to keep challenging myself to let go of old ways of thinking and embrace the new. As Seneca wrote, the ones who pioneered our paths aren't our masters, but our guides. Ah, oh, you remembered that. Thank you. I grieved for a time, but that's done. In the words of Epictetus, as those who rode behind triumphant generals remind them they are mortal, remind yourself your precious one isn't one of your possessions, but something given for now, not forever. Thanks. He's not my... Oh, I see what you did there. Good one. He had more trouble adapting than most. He got himself disqualified from the UFC. So he started some kind of underground blood sport tournament, like we had in Rome. Suppose it appealed to people's baser instincts. And they say he made some good coin, killing a bunch of men like that. But his luck finally ran out, and his life along with it. You know what they say. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Hmm, perhaps. And you. Hi there. Hey. I take it you're the Oracle. Thanks for coming. Actually, I changed my name to Cynthia. I didn't want to be associated with Sentius after what happened. I'm not sure if you heard, but after you drove Pluto off, Proserpina emerged from the Great Temple. She knew right away what none of us had figured out about that psychopath. He'd been keeping my little sister locked up in the upper cistern all that time. But he's been dealt with. He's... Uh, you know what? The important thing is, we'll never see him again. Anything I want. I'm a woman of means in a vast new world. I can go wherever and do whatever I please. Of course, I mostly just stay in my villa and have my servant Alexa summon things for me, because it's just awful out there. Barbarians everywhere. He's still there, all alone. The last golden statue in the underworld. Trapped in a metal shell, slowly losing his mind until the end of time. Eternal torment. Just what he deserves, if you ask me. <laughs> then I suppose he got his wish. You too. I take it you're the oracle everybody's talking about. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. We have... I'm sorry, I don't remember. In any case, I'm Philip. I never thought I'd leave that cave, let alone the city. And now I'm living in the 21st century. What a time to be alive. And it seems I have your catabasis to thank for it. I'm working as a consultant to the Faculty of Classics at Cambridge University, helping fill the odd gap in their knowledge. Not that I need the money, but I do love being around enlightened minds again. My sincere thanks once again.
Greetings. You must be the legendary oracle. It is a sincere privilege to finally make your acquaintance. I am Georgius. I am told we have you to thank for freeing us from Hades. And for that, Hello. I am most grateful. I am reacquainting myself with Greece. It has changed so much over the last 2,000 years, I barely recognize it. This is at once heartbreaking and thrilling. Perhaps one day, once I have seen all of this new Greece and sampled her delights, I will settle down in Sandorini in a villa overlooking the Azure Aegean Sea. I hope you will join me there and regale me with the story of how you faced off against the fearsome god of the underworld and won. You too, my friend. You're... the one we've been waiting for. I'm Fabia. I wanted to say thanks for sending Galerius to save my life. I don't know how you knew, but I would have been crushed by that shrine for sure. I'm just so happy to be here, with you and everyone, together again. Even if it's just for one more night. Well, it's not like I have to work with all the silver Karen gave me, so I just do what makes me happy. Mostly that means baking for my friends and looking at memes while binging TV shows in yoga pants. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Thank you. I really am. You too. Lovely to meet you. I've heard so much about you. I'm thankful that you're here. I was sure the person who drove off the last pagan god would have more important things to do than visit the likes of us. But thank you for coming and for saving our lives. What you did was extraordinary and I'll never forget it. I'm living in Rome again, in a charming little flat by the Tiber. I'm not far from my old place. Oh, and I'm training to be a crisis counselor. After you sent Galerius to persuade Ulpius not to take his own life, I was inspired. I just want to spend the rest of my life helping people, like you helped him. Thank you. That means a lot. And you. Oh, and I hope this isn't too forward, but some of us are going out for a drink after this, if you'd like to join us. Wonderful. Good evening. Greetings. Thank you for your kind words and for liberating us all. In all the time I was in the underworld, I never once imagined that I might Hello end there. up in a place so much like Elysium. Ah, you remember that. I'm a little tired of Ovid, but that's all right. I have 2,000 years worth of poetry to catch up on now. I'm already up to the 19th century and am quite enjoying the work of a fellow named Poe. I think I may have found a kindred spirit. Men have called me mad, but the question is not yet settled whether madness is or is not the loftiest intelligence. I'm recovering. Octavia was kind enough to let me stay with her for a while, at least until I'm well enough to be independent again. And you. Farewell, friend. It is an honor to finally meet you, Oracle. You know my name? Oh, of course. You are an oracle. You know many things. I too would like to offer my thanks for releasing us from that place and for your role in bringing us here. This world is truly wondrous. For a time, I returned to Alexandria, but they have no need of another fisherman. And I came to see there is nothing for me there. Instead, I have decided to follow the custom of your youths and backpack the world. It is a great adventure, 
and I have met many people from many cultures. I spent the first 25 years of my life avoiding the 42 sins that would deny me access to the afterlife. Now, I think it is time I had some fun. Indeed. Thank you, Oraka. Hello there. Oh, I go by Gabriella now. I didn't want to be reminded of that monster every time I heard my own name. You didn't hear. My adoptive father, Sentius, locked me up in the upper cistern to stop me from escaping. After he drove Pluto off, Proserpina came and released me, and that monster got what was coming to him. Mm -hmm. I'm living with Ulpius on a little vineyard in Umbria. It's even more wonderful than I dreamed it would be. I'm so grateful to you for making sure he's still with us. If you're ever passing through the region, I hope you'll come and visit us. You can try some of our very own wine. Thanks. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. I'm Opius. I understand I have you to thank for sending Galerius to save my life. The way you just showed up out of the blue and stopped me from making a terrible mistake. I'll be forever in your debt. I'm living with Gabriella in Umbria. We finally bought the little vineyard we always dreamed of. It'll be a little while before we know what we're doing, but... Every day I look at her and this extraordinary new world with all its beauty and... I think... What if I'd given up hope? And missed out on all of this. So we're living each day to the fullest. And we end them all the same way. Sitting together on our terrace with a glass of our wine. Which the locals say is almost drinkable now. And watching the sunset over the rolling hillside. And I couldn't be happier. Thank you. You too. Evening. It's so nice to finally meet you. I've heard so much about you. I wanted to thank you personally for getting us out of there. And for helping Rufus come to terms with himself. He may come off a little gruff, but once you get past that, he's a lovely fellow. I'm studying to be an architect again and living with Rufus in a beautiful flat in Rotterdam, just down the river from Nijmegen, where I grew up. Of course, it's improved immensely since I was there last. Gleaming futuristic buildings and clean streets full of educated, accepting people. You natives of the 21st century have no idea how fortunate you are. You too. If you're ever in the Netherlands, we'd love to show you around. It's the least we could do. Nice to meet you. I go by Rufus now. New start, new name. Oh, and uh, thanks, by the way, for what you did. Sorry, I'm no good with the mushy stuff. Huh. Good to know. Anyway, it was good practice for the new world. Security cameras and smartphones everywhere. Got to stay vigilant. Mm. I live with Virgil in Rotterdam, not far from where he grew up. It's very... modern. Destroyed in the war, and it... rebuilt itself. Good place for a fresh start. <sighs> Haven't decided what I'm going to do with my life yet. Hmm. One adjustment at a time. You too. Look us up next time you're in the Netherlands. I'm... We're grateful.
There you are. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, there's one more person I wanted to introduce you to. I think you know her. <laughs> Sorry if I frightened you. Just a little joke I've been saving for a long, long time. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Persephone, former goddess of the cycle of life and renewal, and now a regular mortal. I wanted to meet you in person, and thank you for freeing all these people and me. I hate to think what would have happened to us without your intervention. I did. I may have given up my immortality, but I still retain my gifts as the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. After witnessing Pluto punish countless poor souls over thousands of years, I knew this generation, the final wave, would not survive. So I tried to give them a way to buy more time. A second chance. Rather as many second chances as they needed to avoid his wrath. So I whispered to Sentius in secret, telling him the prayer required to create a portal in my shrine. I knew the danger of humans being corrupted by godly power, and so I put a safeguard in place. I required the creator of the portal to sacrifice their own life, so that it could only be used selflessly to help others. What I did not anticipate is that Sentius would retain his accumulated memories from each previous day, and as a veteran soldier, he had long since shed his fear of death. He quickly discovered that he could, in effect, prolong his own life indefinitely by exploiting the cycle. Of course, once I had taught him the prayer, I could not unteach him. And there was little I could do but wait for someone like you to come along and see him for what he was. We were all fortunate you came along when you did. Indeed. Suffice it to say that while Pluto was controlling the eyes and ears of each golden statue, I was able to control their tongues and whisper to you when he was distracted. I am sorry my messages were so cryptic. There were only ever brief windows in which I could speak to you without being detected. I don't know what happened to him. I haven't heard from him, and I rather hope it stays that way. Oh, she inherited dominion over the underworld. Last time we spoke, she was working on a new world of some kind. She wouldn't say what it was, but I'd be surprised if you don't run into her again. I imagine we all will, one day. And you, although it feels like I've known you forever. Oh, and one last thing. Do you remember all those golden statues scattered throughout the city? Good, because they remember you. Well done, my friend. Of all the heroes who ever journeyed to the underworld and returned, none came close to achieving what you did. Hercules, Orpheus, Theseus, and Aeneas would be proud 